How many of you speak English? Just give me a hands up. Great. Okay, so most of you will understand what I'm going to say. The rest, I'll try and keep it at an easy pace. So, let me give you a little bit of background information about me. I started off programming computers, but I thought computers were boring. And when I thought about it, it's because they're not worth anything in a few years. They all, they all get old really quickly and die. I thought I'd start working with something that was a little more important. And to me, that was living organisms. So I'm a genetic scientist. I literally study the genomes, the operating systems of living things. And I was really fortunate that I went from school right to the very top of industry in biotech. So I have an uncommon experience with how to go and build with genetic engineering. Biotechnology is using life as technology. Life is something incredibly precious and rare. If you look out into the universe, you don't find life. This is the only place that we know of today where there is life. Now, that's probably not going to be true in another decade. We're getting better at looking for signs of life in the universe. But right now, with all of these stars, the only place that we know there's life is here on Earth. But most of the life is microscopic. It's not us. It's small creatures that move around, and they're all, we had no idea they existed until about 400 years ago. We knew the stars were there for a long time. We did not know microbes were there until we turned telescopes around and made them into microscopes. This is the face of a spider. Of a housefly. Of an ant. We don't tend to think of life smaller than us as having features of being important, but they are. This is a living world. The technologies that we're talking about here right now, today, the technologies that are moving and changing the world so quickly, most of them don't matter. They only exist because of us. The true technology is the technology of life. These little guys are bacteria. They live inside you. They are digesting your food. They give you the nutrients from the food that you eat. We have a symbiotic relationship with these organisms. There's 10 times more of them cell by cell count than there are of you. We need them. They don't need us. I recognize from my work with computer technology that these little organisms are in fact computers themselves. Not like electronic computers. <coughs> electronic computers are actually really simple. These are chemical computers. They're literally reading their environment all of the time. They're checking in with their metabolism all the time. Input, output. Calculating what they should do next. Normally when I talk about cells, people think cell phones. We're really familiar with these devices. We're not so familiar with our bacteria because they're too small. But I'd like to, I'd like to make the point that cells, living cells, are in fact very similar to cell phones. That they're computers. This is one of the core lessons that I teach and most people don't see it until they start to compare a little bit more. We know computers really well. We make them out of components. We make circuits. We ultimately make 
the computers, and then we hook those computers into networks. It's all very familiar to you. Most of you are under 30. You've grown up with these devices. It turns out that in biology, it's almost the same architecture. Components, we call them proteins. Reactions, those are the circuits. Put enough biochemical reactions together and you get a living cell. Put enough living cells together and you get a tissue. Put enough tissues together and you get you. You are in fact an internet made of 10 trillion cells working together in concert. These cells, <coughs> these computers, do something your cell phone can't. They grow. They double every 10 minutes. You start with one cell and you end up with billions overnight. The most remarkable computers in the world. And our best supercomputers today cannot model what these little bacteria, four billion years old, are doing. If you take one of these bacteria and squish it, just like you were squishing toothpaste, its program comes out of it. When I saw this picture, this is what I saw. And I realized I'm going to become a genetic engineer. I'm going to learn how to read this little language. And in fact, DNA is just software. You guys should know that. Cells are computer. DNA is software. It's a programming language. Like all languages, reading, writing, and comprehension. It's all you have to do to master a language. And reading, we call it DNA sequencing, and it used to be really, really hard. Today, it's robotic. Load the, load the plates in, they run 24 hours a day, and we generate massive amounts of genetic information. The cost of generating this data is falling so quickly, as Celine mentioned, today the bottleneck is writing it to disk. Computers are the bottleneck. This is a next generation DNA sequencer on a USB stick. Soon this is how we'll do our genomes for $1,000 or less. We are going to sequence every living thing on this planet. Every organism, every bacterium, every virus, every animal, every plant, every human, every tissue in every human, because it's so cheap to do it. If we can get a sample of it, we can sequence it and read its complete program. We are going to need massive amounts of computer power to analyze this. We're filling up warehouses with computers and filling them with genetic data. We are going to analyze everything on this planet that is alive. You're going to do this. Our children will be doing this for most of the century. It takes some massive computer power to do this because we can't read it. It's going to be the computers that teach us about what it learns of the living things. The computers are going to know more about us than we do. But here's where it gets really fun, and this is where it gets creative. We're going to start writing DNA. We're doing it now. We've actually been doing it for 40 years. We started with one team. MIT had one group in 2003. Today, it's gotten much bigger. Last year, there was 165 schools around the world. 2,500 students. Projects that were amazing. Students like these two in Cambridge that make bacteria glow very bright. One day they want to make trees glow so you don't need street lights. I want grass that glows at night. Perfect for golfing. I'm really happy that for the first time, Chile is involved 
in this program. You're building apps to raise, to start entrepreneurs, to help other people come out of poverty, to just to be creative, maybe start your own company, build the next Angry Birds. I don't know, but <laughs> in a few years, you're going to be writing apps for biology because it's just code. It's the same thing. And you know that when Apple created the App Store, they were blown away with 25 billion downloads three and a half years later. We're starting to play in this space now at Singularity University. We put together this year a program that we call Launchpad, where we basically invite people to make apps with this technology. We provide a lab and funding and mentorship. And really what we're trying to do is we're trying to explore what do people want to write? What messages do we have to give them to inspire them to create? How can we help them? Where are the bottlenecks? We're learning about this now in Silicon Valley, and everything that we learn, we're going to share with the world. One of the best things, and one of the easiest things to write, one of the most powerful and misunderstood is the virus. I want to say right here and right now, viruses are not all disease-causing agents. Viruses are the data packets on the biological networks of the world. You probably can't name 10 viruses. There are tens of billions of them. Most of them do not hurt you. And when you start to understand the virus, you're going to appreciate that you can program these. These are the apps. This is the future. Biology really is the next IT industry. And you're going to be a part of it. Because this is a field, like all fields in computing, that's dominated by young people. And I absolutely love it when I see people under 30 learning about this. So if you get tired of programming apps for your iPhone, please learn about genetic engineering. And who knows, maybe you'll be the next Zuckerberg in a different computing medium. Thank you.